Welcome to CommercialDrones.fm, the podcast that explores the commercial drone industry, the people who power it, and the concepts that drive it. I'm your host, Ian Smith. Hey everybody, Ian here with Commercial Drones FM, and today you might realize or notice that this is a bit of an early episode. So last week, I actually announced that I would be switching the release schedule to once every two weeks guaranteed, so a bi-weekly release schedule, but I'm back already and it's only been a week. Uh, I guess I couldn't stay away from y'all too long, but it's for good reason. So when things like DJI releasing a new platform take place, uh, that's uh, pretty big news in the drone world. And so just recently on the 26th, so Sunday, February 26th, 2017, DJI announced the DJI Matrice 200 platform at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, Spain. So this was just announced. They released a bunch of information. Right now, it's kind of all hearsay, but we've got a lot to go on. So let's go ahead and break down this M200 announcement and see what DJI has in store for us. So first of all, let's really quickly just take a, a quick listen to DJI's announcement video. So we'll just play a little clip here and you can hear the way in which they're announcing the Matrice 200 platform. Introducing the Matrice 200 series. DJI's most rugged, reliable, and versatile commercial aircraft to date. Forged by the hands of our top drone engineers, it wields an array of functionality for enterprise users who demand tools that exceed expectations. So you may have noticed the video itself or the sound itself has a, a very rugged feel to it. So down to the announcer's voice, but really you can tell from this, the way that DJI is positioning the Matrice 200 as a very industrial, very rugged enterprise grade platform. So breaking it down, the Matrice 300 or the Matrice 200 rather is coming in three different models. So it'll be the Matrice 200 or M200 the M210 and then the M210 RTK version. And so at the base version, we have the M200. That comes with a new feature, the AirSense ADS-B receiver, an FPV camera, a forward-facing FPV camera. With an onboard FPV camera, pilots have a real-time view in front of the aircraft to navigate confidently through complex environments dual batteries and flight autonomy, which is listed as one of the bullet points on DJI's website. I don't really know what that means. Uh, I guess they just needed a third bullet point or fourth bullet point for that matter. But moving to the intermediate model, this is where things start to get even more interesting. So we've got all the M200 features plus multiple payload configurations, which means there are now two gimbals possible on the bottom of the drone. When it comes to gathering critical intel, two eyes in the sky is better than one. The Matrice 210 gives you the power of mounting two gimbals at once. Maximize efficiency by flying two cameras side by side for capturing different types of image data at the same time. So you can put two different sensors on the bottom of the drone and then combined with the forward looking FPV camera, you effectively have three different cameras on a single platform. Uh, so this is definitely in response to the first responders and the construction and mining companies and, and uh, inspection companies that all have been asking not to have to choose just one sensor. They want to be able to put up to two different sensors on the drone. And not only that, but you can actually mount the sensor. There's a top mounted gimbal, so you can mount the sensor on top of the drone itself. You can now mount a camera on top of the aircraft for inspecting vital infrastructure in all those hard to reach places. So this is targeted, what DJI says, is for inspection companies. Uh, mainly if you wanted to inspect perhaps underneath a bridge, 
uh, where the drone is actually looking, you know, from the camera view, looking up under underneath some type of overhang. So being able to do inspections uh, underneath an, an, an overhanging object, which is really interesting. And then the M210, the intermediate model, still also comes with some universal ports, some input. Um, the final model is the M210 RTK version. With the Matrice 210 RTK, your aircraft gains centimeter level positioning accuracy. Thanks to DJI's DRTK, GNSS High Precision GPS Technology. So this also comes with all the M210 features that we just reviewed, but then also built in RTK GPS. And so while RTK you know, may seem pretty great, and, and it is really, um, DJI, as far as I'm aware, at least with the M600 release, which also featured RTK, does not yet allow geotagging from the RTK's you know, much more accurate GPS system of imagery. You can only use RTK for the flight portion. So being able to get within centimeters of a spot in X, Y, and Z, but not actually being able to rely on the RTK for geotagging the imagery. So from what I am aware, DJI has mentioned that they would kind of enable that feature with a future firmware update for the M600. So hopefully for the M to 10 RTK version, uh, this is is fixed and we can get some RTK tagged uh, geo-referenced imagery here for much more accurate maps. So this is really DJI Enterprises coming out party with this release of the, or the announcement of the M Mitri's 200 platform. So on Twitter, if you paid attention on Twitter, at DJI Enterprise was really the one calling all the shots, announcing all the features, and you know, tweeting all the GIFs and the videos and things like that of the M200, and they haven't really leveraged that account too much. You know, on DJI Enterprise's website, there's like a blog with some cool case studies and things like that, but you know, nothing really meaty when it came to hardware and platforms. So it's really showcasing, you know, what DJI Enterprise is here for. So these, you know, spe specific solutions, these specific platforms that are geared towards the industrial enterprise use cases. And DJI is targeting the M200 series at power line, wind turbine, and bridge inspections, uh, definitely for search and rescue, for solar inspections, firefighting operations, telecom inspections, so cell tower inspection, offshore rig inspection, construction, and precision agriculture. So we'll go ahead now and we'll dive in deeper into actually what it is that the hardware provides. So the total weight of the platform, and I believe this is with no extra added sensors or batteries, is actually 3.8 kilograms. And that actually equates to 8.4 pounds. So not too heavy and still within the FAA part 107 regulations. Something that's new and DJI has been touting pretty heavily and some people are quite uh, understandably excited about is the IP43 classification. For rough weather, we've added IP43 ingress protection that shields your aircraft from the elements. Now, IP stands for ingress protection, and this is a categorization or a certification for hardware. Um, and what's interesting is that there's not an official body that tests this. So you can actually self-certify yourself uh, for the ingress protection factor. And so DJI is claiming um, IP43 classification for ingress protection. And what that means is the first digit, the four in the IP43, means the, the actual um, effectiveness to repel solid particles. So a higher number is better in this case, and a higher number can repel or, or stop the ingress of smaller particles. So what the four stands for is, it means it's effective against objects greater than, so larger than one millimeter. So that means most wires, slender screws, and large ants. Um, and for reference though, if it was IP5, if it started with the five, then a level five would be actually be able to protect against some dust. So right now this is not going to sand or dust proof your drone. So apologies anyone who's operating on a beach or in a desert, but this does not mean that you will be able to, you know, operate carefree in those scenarios. 
So the second digit is the threes in IP43. So the three stands for the liquid ingress protection. So this is the hardware's ability to repel or stop the ingress of water into the system. So a three stands for, it can you know kind of withstand spraying water. And so there's a lot of levels of spraying water. There's fire hose, and then there's the little kind of sprayer on your uh, home sink. Um, I would be much more confident in saying this could repel the home sink variant of that. And, you know, really, if you look into the, the ingress protection factor, uh, water falling as a spray at any angle up to 60 degrees from the vertical shall have no harmful effect. That's what the three means. So this is great. Um, you know, you see that the drone can now withstand rain uh, much more reliably, some snow. But really, when you come down and think, think about it, you have to look at the other sensors and the other hardware that's on the on the aircraft. So I am not aware of any IP ratings that DJI has released for any of the other sensors. So the super expensive sensors that you're putting on the, these drones, uh, the FLIR camera, the XT, um, you know, the 30X zoom, the X4S, X5S, etc. I don't know what the IP certification is for each of those sensors but you definitely don't want to you want to have an equal or greater certification for those uh, as well so um, I'm, i expect a lot of people to have questions on that and dji should uh, make it easy for people to find out that information so the m200 series also comes with the you know they're really touting this redundancy factor so you know enterprise are not as tolerant of risk as other operations maybe a small business but you know, this is important for everybody. So safety is very important. So the drone comes equipped with dual IMUs, dual inertial measure measurement units, uh, which is, you know, essentially what makes the flight controller tick and get its measurements, triple barometers. So three, not two, but three barometers, and then dual frequency for communication for RF frequency. Um, there's also vision systems for collision avoidance as usual with DJI. With DJI's flight autonomy system, most concerns about safety and reliability are a thing of the past. An upward-facing time-of-flight laser sensor recognizes objects above the aircraft. Stereo vision systems detect obstacles down below and in front of the aircraft. The M200's ability to sense and avoid obstacles makes close proximity inspections faster, easier, and safer. This is somewhat new. We have an upper infrared sensor and that can sense objects above the drone. So presumably useful when you're getting in tight quarters underneath an oil rig or a bridge and you're using that top mounted gimbal on top of the drone to look underneath an object. Uh, we've also got the standard downward vision and ultrasonic sensors, the same that the Inspire 2 and the Phantom 4 Pro have along with the Mavic Pro and the front vision sensors, but nothing in the rear for this tip particular platform. The DJI website also lists a seven kilometer operational range. So if you're operating in the US or any country that does not yet allow beyond visual line of sight operations, then you are going to, if you are a compliant operator, see this range go unused, but it's also nice to have that. Maybe it'll increase the signal strength when you're still operating close enough, um, you know, within visual line of sight. The website mentions that the M200 series uses Lightbridge 2, and something I've been asking myself is why not OcuSync? You know, they announced OcuSync, which has a greater range for video than Lightbridge 2, at least according to DJI's website. And I was wondering why they didn't opt to use that on this platform or the Inspire 2 for that matter. And so after a little bit of digging, it could be because OcuSync is designed for maybe, and this is all hearsay, this is kind of uh, my assumption, unless uh, someone can, you know, <laughs> correct me on this, but OcuSync might be designed more for zero or very low latency, and that, you know, it can extend the range a bit, but then, you know, Lightbridge could be more designed for broadcast. So having a lower, lower range, um, but really, you know, having higher quality, higher resolution video at, um, you know, better distances. So lower latency could come in handy though during close operations to structures or maybe even search and rescue operations. So I'm still just curious why, first of all, what's the big difference between Lightbridge 2 and OcuSync? It could be different frequencies in which they operate um, in the radio frequencies, but you know, OcuSync is on the Mavic Pro and 
there's a little bit of inconsistency in the website uh, as well. So the M200 website says that the range is seven kilometers uh, total range. It doesn't say video or anything. It doesn't specify. But then if you look at the Mavic Pro website where it talks about OcuSync, it says that OcuSync is also seven kilometer range. So it says both both are seven kilometers, but one is Lightbridge 2, one is OcuSync. Mavic Pro lists video range. Light or uh, M200 lists just r general range. So I don't really know. The Lightbridge 2 website on the Inspire 2 lists a video range of five kilometers. So I don't really know what's happening here. Most of us don't have to worry about this. It's nice to have range, but you know, this is just a, a little uh, DJI mystery that that's kind of cropped up. And I think I just have to take a little bit more look at the specs here to really understand the differences between OcuSync and Lightbridge 2 and why they chose one and not the other. So I'd love some answers on that. A newly designed dual battery power system supports up to 32 minutes of flight for maximum airtime with a single gimbal. Moving on to battery life. So up to 38 minutes flight time is what's quoted by DJI. And they're talking a lot about battery redundancy. So the M200 series will use DJI's TB50 or TB55 batteries. And these are the same batteries as the Inspire 2 uses. Uh, the only thing listed on DJI's website right now is actually the TB50 and not the TB55. So presumably the TB55 series will just be uh, a larger capacity, a larger milliamp hour capacity than the TB50. But the TB50 batteries that are on the DJI website for the Inspire 2 right now start at 160 bucks a pop, which would make one fresh battery change for the Matrice 200. Uh, start at 320 bucks total. So these batteries are self-heating and they can operate in sub-zero temperatures because of that. Two batteries provide power redundancy that ensures reliable operation in a wide range of environments and a self-heating function keeps them operating even in sub-zero temperatures. So hopefully on some glaciers, Iceland, Greenland, Antarctica, Alaska, etc. You can go ahead and operate uh, pretty carefree with these batteries and even some of the northern uh, climates here in the United States. So the 38 minutes of flight time, obviously that's going to be affected by the sensor payload when you're carrying two different cameras and two gimbals, uh, especially a big camera like the C Z30. Uh, with the 30x optical zoom you're gonna see reduced flight time no doubt so there's no table yet that's been released from dji as far as i'm aware that will show realistically how these flight times will be affected uh, one thing to be sure of though is that the 38 minutes of flight time is in the absolute best case scenario and it does not specify as far as i can tell whether that 38 minute flight time is with the TB50 or TB55 batteries. I'm assuming the TB55, who knows. So the drone is listed as being able to carry up to a two kilogram payload. So that's pretty nice news. Um, as long as uh, you, you aren't using the two dual gimbals, you know, this is probably um, specifically targeting the M210 and M210 RTK series, which have those communication ports open. So universal comms ports are on the chassis of the drone with the M210 and the M210 RTK version. And they have uh, expansion ports, which can support UART, PWM, and GPIO, and also a XT30 power port. So presumably you could put your own cool custom sensors on this. Maybe someone can stick on a laser methane detector, for example, and do some oil and gas methane detection uh, by powering it from the XT30 and using either the UART, PWM, or GPIO connections. Um, we'll go ahead and see. I would love to know if anyone's planning on doing that or using any other custom sensors here. So the next item that we get to is very interesting really it's the ADS-B sensor so ADS-B stands for automatic dependent surveillance dash broadcast so ADS is automatic dependent surveillance and it's a broadcast version of that um, so what this means is that the built-in ADS-B receiver on the M200 can enhance the airspace safety 
of the operator by automatically providing real-time information about nearby manned aircraft who are broadcasting their signal over ADS-B. So I don't know how this looks from an operator's perspective, uh, you know, using the DJI Go software or similar, you know, are you just gonna get an alert that says there's an aircraft nearby, maybe even a potential location? That's pretty big stuff. And I could see that being very, very desirable from an enterprise perspective. So very excited for that. Um, congrats to DJI for doing that. I know that's a pretty big feat and this could further standard, standardize some ADS-B technology. Um, so I, I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on that and playing with it a bit. Um, so looking at the cameras, you know, we mentioned earlier that this is like the first drone in the DJI line that's built to carry up to two gimbals on the bottom. And that those gimbals will support all the current line of Zenmuse cameras from DJI. Loaded up with the Zenmuse X4S, X5S, Z30 zoom camera, or the XT thermal imaging platform. So we have the XT thermal camera, the Z30 zoom camera, which is the 30X zoom camera with the Sony sensor inside. And most of these cameras do have Sony sensors uh, besides the XT camera, which has the FLIR thermal sensor in it. But then the also the X4S and the X5S are included in that bunch. So theoretically, you could throw like an XT thermal sensor and then a Z30 zoom sensor on there and do some pretty radical search and rescue operations. Uh, maybe just kind of broadly scanning the area with the XT thermal sensor. And then if you, you know, kind of notice any specific heat signatures for something you're looking for, pop on over to the Z30 zoom camera and then flip on that 30X zoom, pop right in, and then you can go ahead and check out if there's anything that is worth noting in the area. And that becomes a very, very interesting workflow. Instead of having to, you know, use one camera on the drone at a time, you, you now have two. And so you could use that for inspection, you could use it for search and rescue and all the different other use cases that DJI has put on their website. And now we get to the software. So of course, DJI, one of their biggest competitive advantages over everyone, and something that I don't know why more companies are not embracing is an open SDK. So the Matrice 200, of course, supports the open SDK, which means all the apps that exist in the DJI ecosystem can work with this platform. And this also means DJI Go 4, which is the app that is for anything Phantom 4 and above, uh, can work with this drone and DJI Pilot, and also the DJI Ground Station Pro app. There's also something mentioned called the DJI Flight Hub. Now this is new and what it says on the DJI website is to, the purpose of this app is to oversee your aerial operations remotely to view live inspections and manage your fleet of drones. So it's definitely has, having to do with enterprise fleet management, mission planning, and then also live streaming of video. And that's pretty interesting because Arion, a competitor of DJI that makes much more, you know, typically much more expensive drones, also has released something uh, recently called Arion Live. And it also uh, deals with some live streaming technology. So really cool stuff going on here, you know, pushing the boundaries. This makes a lot of sense for DJI to kind of, um, you know, get, go down this route and have more video live streaming and cloud-based operational technology. And as the industry matures, there are starting to be smaller, you know, larger fleets of small drones um, popping up everywhere. So managing those fleets is going to be a challenge for the enterprise. And then we have the detail of no detail on price. Um, this was not released yet, as I've been kind of scouring through all the different media um, releases, there was some big, you know, more major media outlets that released some some stories on the M200. And I think one of them was, I, you know, pulled a quote from one of them saying that this would be their most expensive drone yet. And I believe the M600 is something about, you know, 5K uh, with no sensors. So this would probably put the M200 at above 5K. Then you got to add on the sensors. Then you got to add on, you know, if you get the M200 or the M210, or the M210 RTK. I mean, you're looking at a pretty expensive drone here and you could probably spend into the 20K range for one of these platforms. Uh, we'll try to update you on the website whenever we get pricing, website or social media uh, on this platform. 
DJI says the M200 will be available for orders in Q2. So either in April, May, or June. And that's pretty much all the information we have right now. My personal opinion, this drone is going to, you know, kick ass. It's, it's, it's amazing how DJI continuously not only raises the bar on all its competitors, but raises the bar on itself. Uh, the two gimbals, you know, dual sensors on the drone of two different types, ADS-B, uh, further increased uh, redundancy and, and automation of the drone is pretty amazing. And I think a lot of people are impressed. Uh, biggest thing I, I can foresee is the IP ingress protection factors on the sensors. Those being somewhat unknown, at least to me at the recording uh, of this episode right now. But we'll go ahead and see how that shakes out. Now, as far as competition, who is this drone competing with? I mean, it, it effectively, I don't want to say takes down these competitors, but it, it really puts a lot of friction between them and success. So we've got SenseFly's Albrus drone. This is SenseFly's multi-rotor drone that used to be called Exom, the drone formerly known as Exom. And also Aerialtronics, a Dutch company in the Netherlands, they have a drone called the Altura Zenith. It's also a you know very premium high-end drone. Um, they released something, I think I saw it a couple years ago in London, which was amazing, uh, the Dupla Vista dual camera system. And this was the first time I had seen a thermal camera and an RGB sensor in the same unit. So DJI took a different approach. They didn't combine the cameras together, but they just put them on two different gimbals and allow you to switch between them. So this puts a bunch of pressure on Aerialtronics with their Altura Zenith platform, uh, SenseFly's Albrus, and of course, Intel's Falcon 8 drone, which is very popular for doing inspections. You know, all of these drones and mainly the Albrus and the Falcon 8 from Intel are, you know, popular for doing inspection and going under bridges and, and you know, companies like Cyberhawk and Sky Futures are using them on offshore oil rigs to inspect you know, underneath and save tons and tons of money from the, the company having to shut down the oil rig by doing an inspection with a drone instead of having to set up all that scaffolding and put people on, on the side of the oil rig, etc. So this is a super, super interesting play. This is the first big push I've noticed from DJI Enterprise. And we will go ahead and we'll monitor this situation. We'll update you with any important information I'll post all the specs and all my notes on the website at commercialdrones.fm in your web browser. And if you want to join the convo, hit me up on Twitter at Drones Podcast. Check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Drones Podcast. And thank you, thank you so, so much to all of the patrons of the podcast, the supporters who have donated their own money on the podcast Patreon account at patreon.com slash drones podcast you guys are amazing the fruits of your donations are already showing and we've got the slack group up and running the private slack group for donators only uh, for supporters only rather and you can get entrance into that group and join the conversation with all of us for just a buck a month so you can head to patreon.com slash drones podcast to go ahead and get access there and see all the other cool rewards you can get uh, there's there's even more stuff if you you know feel like you want to donate any more money than that. Um, so that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, like I said, any updates will come out through commercialdrones.fm. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll go ahead and we'll cut off the mics. Cheers. The DJI Matrice 200 series, high performance aircraft with the reliability and versatility fit for any mission no matter how tough.